In this video, we're going to go over permissions. We're going to talk about what the different sections are, owner, group, and everyone else, and what the different numbers mean for setting up permissions. Let's talk about permissions. So you can see right here in the screenshot that we have some files, and they're in they were uh, they're inside some directory, and we use the ls hyphen l command to get the what's known as a long form of this data. So you can basically see we have some files. Actually, these right here are directories, and then we have a file right here. And so this is the uh, the file or directory name, and this is the date and the time it was last modified. This is the size. And this is the group name that it belongs to. That's going to be pretty important to us. And this is the user. This is who actually created the uh, file or folder in the first place. And then this uh, right here, this is the number of hard links. Okay. And this area right here is what we're going to focus on. That is our permissions. So the way it works is we have basically three groups of permissions. And the first group in the green right here, that's the user permissions. Okay, so the person who created the file or folder, they set up the permissions for, for them, for, the, for who created it. And then you have the second column here in the blue, which is what's known as the group permissions. And the group permissions are for any type of group that they want to assign uh, that particular file or folder to. That would be the group permissions. Okay, and the group, of course, is specified right here for the group name. This, of course, is the owner name. So in this case, the owner is Shum, and the group is staff. Now we look at this other one right here, this red one, and that is basically everybody else. So a lot of times we have uh, files that are looked at over the internet where we don't know who is looking at them, for example. All right, that would be basically the permissions here. We may not want them to have execute permissions or write permissions or whatever. So basically, that's what we'd be setting up right here. And then the very first column that we have here in the kind of the yellowish color, that is our file type. Now, if it says D, that stands for directory. If it's just a, a hyphen like this, well, that is uh, a file. Okay, so that's pretty much um, how this breaks down. But again, we're going to focus pretty much on this area, which is the permissions area. Now, when we zoom in a little bit closer to just this area, it's very important to understand that, again, we have these three groups. We have the owner group. The, the group group, or the, what belongs to the group. So we have the owner, I should say, the groups, and then we have everybody else. And, of course, this line right here, as we discussed, that is the file type. Now, when we look at this, we have R, W, and then we have this um, blank line. If we'll go over on this uh, screen right here. R is for readable. So for the owner right here, they have readable privileges, and they have writable pr privileges, which is this W right here. Okay? That's what they have. They have read and write privileges. They do not have executable privileges. That would be if you want to execute the file to do something or um, you know something like that. That's that's what that would be for the executable. Um, and then when it's a hyphen like this, that is considered denied, which means that they don't have that privilege. So the owner, the group, and the other all have the same three slots. Okay, and so um, they all can have read, write, or executable assigned to them. It depends on what the person setting the permissions up for up allows them to do. So again, they can all have read, write, and execute. It just depends on how they're going to set up. So in this particular case, again, owner has read, write, group has read, and other has read only. If it's a line like this, that means that there's no permissions assigned to that category, which would be the right category where my cursor is. Okay. Now, the way we assign these permissions is using what's known as a octal system. And this table here pretty much breaks it down. So you can see that uh, if you have a one, you don't really need to worry so much about this binary column here, just how it converts over to binary. But if you look at the octal, you have one, and you come over here, and that basically means execute. So the one stands for execute. The number two here stands for write. And the three stands for write execute. So what you can see is if, they, if you want to give somebody write privileges and execute privileges, well, basically it's one plus two. That's where the three comes in. You can see what three did. Just added one and two together. That's where we get three. Four is the readable permissions, the R. And then five is the readable and executable. Well, how do we get that number of five? It's the readable from four plus one. 
from the execute. So when you start to break this down, what you tend to realize is that all the only numbers you really need to know is one for execute, two for write, and four for read. If you know these three numbers and you get those memorized, then the rest of this is just combinations of those numbers depending on what you want to do. Say for example down here, we look at the, the number seven. Well, that comes about down to read, write, and, and execute. Okay, that would be seven. Where do we get that from? Four plus two plus one. That's how they add up. So every one of those uh, columns that we have, we're gonna be assigning one of these numbers to. So every column that we have for the owner, the group, and everyone else is gonna have a number assigned to it when we actually do something called chmod, which we're gonna see in just a second. But this is kind of how it breaks down with the numbers. So if we look at this um, file right here, or I'm sorry, this picture, you can see that um, D, that's the file type. In this case, it's a directory. And now here's the owner permissions right here. And for this one, they have read, write, and execute permissions. This shows you what the values of each individual one is. And they're always gonna be in this order, by the way. So read is always first, write is always the second one, and execute is always the third one. So for the owner permissions right here, we are gonna give it a number of seven. When we give a number of seven, we basically means that we're gonna be doing read four, plus write two, plus one for execute. And then we come over here and we look at now the second one. This is the group permissions. This one only has a five. Okay, well that's gonna be four plus one. Remember, we, we can't change these numbers. X is always gonna equal one, R is always gonna equal four. So the only way to get five in this particular system is only is we can only do four and one. So in this particular case for the group, they have read privileges, they have execute privileges, but they do not have write privileges because I did not add anything here. You see, I just used the four and the one. So you see how, how these numbers work? So this one, number five, basically is what I assign for permissions for the group. Now everyone else, they just have read permissions and that's why it's just a four. See, it's just a four right here. Okay, that's read. I'm not giving them write privileges, which would be two, and I'm not giving them execute privileges, which is one. Okay, those are both blank. That, and, and the reason they're blank is because I'm just using this number. Once I use the number four, then it knows that's for read only. So you, it's very important, I'll go up a couple of slides. It's very important that you understand what these numbers mean, that, that the four is the read, and that the two is the write, and the one is the, is the execute, and also understand that they must go in this order. Okay, so I, that's why the order is written here. It shows you the order for every single one of them. So if you were to change uh, the permissions for this particular file to what's known as 754, then you do something like this. chmod 754, and then the file name, some file name, you would write that down. And that would change it to 754. And you can change it to whatever combination you want. Uh, 700, 655, 400, you know, whatever you want to do. You just have to make sure that you use the numbers that are provided for the specific values. And again, you only really need to understand what one, two, and four is to figure out what the rest of the numbers possibly could be. The highest number is gonna be a seven. The lowest number, of course, will be zero. To summarize, when we were talking about permissions, we looked at what the different sections are, uh, owner, the person who created the file directory, the group, the group which the file directory belongs to, and we looked at everyone else. We also looked at what the numbers mean when we comes down to setting up permissions. And what we basically learned was that we really need to remember numbers one, two, and four. And by understanding that, we can pretty much set up any combination that we want to to set up either no permissions at all or full permissions.